Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, in this session we will discuss the different design rules for CMOS technology. Especially in this session we will talk about, we will discuss the very important rules that is Labda design rules. First of all, let us talk what is the need of design rules. So from the exam point of view, you may expect the straightforward question why the design rules are required uh, while implementing the CMOS technology or what is the necessity of design rules. We know that in case of IC fabrication, the different layers are uh, there, different active components are used. So certain uh, rules are made so that the performance of the circuit should not be degraded as well as there won't be, there will not be any side effects like open circuit, short circuit and so on. <clears throat> so first uh, necessity is these rules are used to decide the minimum spacing between all layers of the circuit. There are different layers. So by making use of these rules, we have to decide what should be the minimum spacing, minimum gap between the different layers of the circuit. Then it provides the set of guidelines to construct different masks in the IC fabrication process. It provides minimum spacing and minimum width between objects of different layers. So there are n number of layers. So uh, in every layer, there are many <coughs> objects. So these, these are the rules which provides the uh, required spacing, required width of that uh, particular thing. Especially the minimum line width, that is MLW, minimum line width, this parameter is used for mask dimensions of semiconductor material layers. That means this design rules gives us an idea of MLW, minimum line width, which is used for the mask dimensions of the semiconductor material layers. <coughs> These rules are used to transform the circuit concepts to the actual geometry in the silicon material. It prevents unwanted short circuit or open circuit of the thin line. See, if there is a thin line between uh, the two layers, the line is used to join the two layers and that is uh, very thin. It may happen that after a particular distance, the line becomes open circuit. So there will be unnecessary open circuit in the, uh, in the designing. Then if the two lines joining, let us say, two different layers are very close to each other, there is not sufficient spacing, then it may happen that there will be short circuit. But if you are using such design rules, then there won't be any short circuit or open circuit. Then these are the rules designed in such a way that there will not be any degradation as far as the circuit performance is concerned. Especially for this, a scalable design rule, that is a lambda rule is used. Actually, lambda is set to some value and then all the dimensions like uh, the gap between the two layers, then the spacing between the contact and a particular uh, polysilicon layer and so on. So all these things, all these dimensions are expressed in terms of a lambda parameter, where lambda is a parameter which is set to some value initially. Typical MLW, that is minimum line width, is 2 lambda. This is the typical value of uh, minimum line width used in the design. So, this is about the necessity of design rules for the IC fabrication. The design rules are based on different components. First is substrate or well. The another name to the substrate is a well. We know that in case of uh, N MOSFET, P type of substrate or P type of well is used, whereas in case of P MOSFET, N type of substrate is used. Then diffusion regions, there are different diffusion regions. So transistors are formed in this diffusion regions. These diffusion regions are also called active layers. So active layers are N plus for N MOSFET and P plus for uh, P MOSFET. Then polysilicon layer. These layers are used to form gate electrodes of the transistors. Then metal interconnect layers. So these are the interconnection layers used to interconnect power supply and ground as well as for input and output. Then contact and wire layers. So different contact layers or different wire layers are used. These are used to form interlayer connections. So this is about the different components which causes effect 
on the lambda rules. Next part is MOSIC that is MOS Metal Oxide Semiconductor Implementation Service Design Rules. These are CMOS design rules. First, we will talk about lambda rules. This is the most important part. From the exam point of view, you may expect the question like this. Uh, write and explain the different lambda rules. So, these are the different rules. We know that. Uh, in case of MOS design especially, different layers are used, uh, used then different metal connections are there, different wire or different contacts are made. This wire or contacts are used uh, for the interconnection between the different things. So there are certain rules while designing uh, the particular thing, we need to follow all such rules. So first, first rule for N well or P well, this word well stands for substrate. We know that in case of N MOSFET, we have to use P type of substrate and in case of P MOSFET, we have to use N type of substrate. So for N well, N substrate or P well, P substrate, the rules are minimum width is equal to 10 lambda. Look at this diagram. This is one well, one substrate. So minimum width is 10 lambda. Then wells at same voltage level with spacing is equal to 6 lambda. These are the wells at same voltage level. This is the same voltage level. So minimum spacing between them is 6 lambda. Then wells at same voltage level without spacing is 0 lambda. These are the two wells, two substrate where there is no spacing. So this is, this is 0 lambda. Then wells at different uh, types. These are the wells which are at different types. The spacing is 8 lambda. Then second type of rule for active area. So first rule is minimum width as well as minimum spacing for the active area is 3 lambda. Then S or D that is source or drain active to well edge spacing is 5 lambda. We discussed well is a substrate. So spacing up to edge of the substrate. Then SS that is substrate or well contact active to well edge spacing is 3 lambda. Then next rules for polysilicon layer. So minimum width as well as minimum spacing is 2 lambda. Then minimum gate extension is 2 lambda. Minimum active area to uh, polysilicon layer. This spacing is 3 lambda. Then minimum polysilicon area uh, layer to active area. This spacing is 1 lambda. Then rules for the contact. So first rule is exact contact size is 2 lambda. Then minimum spacing is again 2 lambda. Minimum spacing to the gate terminal of uh, MOSFET of the transistor is 2 lambda. Then minimum allowed active overlap. This spacing is 1 lambda. Then we are using different metals. So for metal 1, the minimum width or as well as the minimum spacing is equal to 3 lambda. Then minimum overlap of polysilicon uh, contact and active contact is 1 lambda. For metal 2, the rules are minimum size 3 lambda and minimum spacing 4 lambda. It is shown in this in this diagram. So minimum size of this metal is this spacing is this distance is 3 lambda and minimum spacing between the two is 4 lambda. <coughs> Next for metal 3, the minimum width is 6 lambda and minimum, minimum spacing is 4 lambda. Then rules for wire 1. Wire or contacts are used for the interconnection of different layers. So these rules are exact size is 2 lambda, minimum spacing 3 lambda, minimum spacing to the contact is 2 lambda and minimum overlap by metal 1. This allowed uh, spacing is 1 lambda. Then last is contact to active area rules. So minimum allowed active overlap is 1 lambda minimum contact spacing is 2 lambda and exact contact size is 2 lambda into 2 lambda. So these are the different lambda rules used for the designing. So dear students, that's it for today's session. So thank you. Thanks a lot for watching this video.